Do you find yourself not wanting to tackle that honeydew list at home or the dreaded home and business repairs and improvements? Let Jones Empire LLC, which is a locally owned and operated business from Charleston to Huntington, West Virginia. Jones Empire LLC is licensed and insured servicing commercial and residential properties throughout the state of West Virginia. Jones Empire LLC offers junk removal, property cleaning, interior and exterior cleaning, paver, patios, small remodels, tree pruning, tree trimming, tree cutting, tree removal, demolition, tree thinning, stump removal, landscaping, painting and staining, gutter cleaning, pressure and even small remodels. Jones Empire LLC also offers dump trailer services for all your hauling needs. Jones Empire LLC offers free estimates. Schedule your service today. Call or text 304-541-8934. Again, call Jones Empire LLC 304-541-8934. They also offer 24-7 emergency services. Call them today. the old bicycle this evening <laughs> we got dave back in on the board and we got dan over here but uh it's like we don't have anybody so <laughs> we didn't have any sound here a little bit ago you know it's one of them things one of them ghosts turned the power off on us yeah, yeah. i don't know hey it wasn't it's... me this time I don't think yeah, we can't. Last time yeah, I think I think you guys are trying to say that I'm rusty. We can't actually yeah. blame it on on Dave this time. Or I, Dan, sorry. Yeah, but, but we can blame it on Dave. Dave, Dave's got and, rocks. Uh, so we look at him. I don't know what's wrong with mine. I can't hardly hear me right now. Am I on two or three? Uh, two, two. How about now? Yeah, that sounds a lot better. What'd you do? Turn it up a little bit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe where we're not using all the people at one time, like when I'm by myself, it doesn't mm-hmm. draw as much. So That's exactly that's what it is. I did yeah. turn mine down. Oh, that's exactly what so it, it is. It just definitely couple, draws. A couple more notches. There you go. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, guys. Well, spring gobble season is just around the corner, and uh, but we're going to be taking a little turn from that. We're supposed to be getting into turkey season. Now, we've been having people ask, when's turkey season coming? When's the sessions coming for turkey? When are we going to be talking turkey? Well, we're going to be talking turkey after the 27th. Yeah. So, and, and everybody out there wanting to know when we're going to be start to talk turkey, we're going to start talking turkey after the 27th. I mean, we're going to talk a little turkey tonight, possibly. I mean, but, we talk yeah. turkey all the time, yeah. just not a lot. They, yeah. hey, they want a full episode of turkey. They, they, I mean, you know how turkey hunters are. Oh, yeah. yeah we're, NWTF was just this weekend, or last weekend. Last sorry. weekend, yeah. We yeah, missed it. It was again. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, you know, people go down there and stay all week, really, and had just make a whole week out of it. But um, it's it's hot and heavy right now. You know, it's on people's minds, and winter's just about over with, and the next thing, good, spring gobbler. <laughs> yeah. so, Amen. Everybody wants it, but... Uh, so, like I said, we've got Dave back, which is nothing special. We got Dan here, though. That's right. <laughs> hey, guys. You oh, gotta hey, be Dave. kidding me. Glad you can push buttons, Dave. <laughs> Man, I bleed for you guys on this thing. I'm bleed for you all. I, I just had to do that. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Man. I, we still love you, Dave. I, 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 I can't get it wondered respect. if we needed to put an application out for a production guy. Oh, yeah, like an was, ad or something? Yeah, like run an ad like, in the local like, paper? Like yeah. run an ad like in we with our podcast, it. you know? Mm. So. Yeah, we was talking about it. Huh. Yeah. We really was. Just yeah. put it on, on, on Facebook well, Marketplace. We, we had one uh, <laughs> inquiry, too, actually. Without putting anything out, it was a monkey. <laughs> it was a monkey? Yeah. Huh. So you he, guys do, are, he said he could do just as good as Dave. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. <laughs> I didn't come up with that. Oh, yeah. Man. All right, guys. So please welcome with us tonight, Caleb Hodge. Hey, good Woo! job, Mike. Hey. <laughs> and he is the chairman of the Ducks Unlimited chapter in the Knoll River Valley. 
Yes. Well, so, what? Knorr. Knorr. <laughs> Knorr. It's the Knorr River Valley. That's the ancient Native American pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I stepped into New York there for a little bit. <laughs> Came back. Knorr. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's all right. At least it ain't the Siri pronunciation. Yeah. Kanawha. Yeah, Kanawha. <laughs> okay. Caleb, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How about yourselves? Doing good. Awesome. Awesome. Are you having a good time sitting here listening to us crack up? I mean, so far. <laughs> hey, you can jump right. in, too. You yeah. don't have to know Dave to cut off. <laughs> oh, okay. If yeah, that's really right. really want right. to know he's been sitting there since this morning. We've been trying to get ready for this all day long. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he's on his 42nd bottle of water. Yeah, so. and we have True. not let him use the restroom. <laughs> it's been bad. <laughs> it's impressive. He's actually Very. strapped in his chair right now. Can't <laughs> yeah. We're like, you can't leave. He said he, he said he was good with it. It's like duck hunting. He's yeah. used to it. <laughs> Sitting in the blind all day. Yeah. So oh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Caleb. A little bit about myself. <laughs> <laughs> he likes long walks off short piers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Caleb. Well, we know he doesn't like sharks, though, so that might be a false we, statement. We know that he just jumped into the Ducks Unlimited thing, so yes. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I saw a Facebook post, and I was like, you know, I walked over to my wife, and I was like, hey, you think I should do this? And she was like, I don't care what you do. I said, all right, let's give this a try. That's and a good woman. Yeah. Well, now, now, Try that with guns. Yeah. See how that goes. I just don't tell her. Yeah, that, that's that, that, yeah. Well, now she knows. <laughs> <laughs> she knows now. Yeah. She will not hear this podcast. <laughs> I don't know. If, if we market as good as Greg Hicks does, she will. Because he found out about the, the Ducks Unlimited chapter thing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I do like sharks. It's just you're talking about swimming 30 oh. foot to them, and that's yeah. just too close. Oh, well, yeah. 30 yeah. foot too close. I got you. Dan likes to swim with them. That's right. Hey, if he gets in the water and he don't see sharks, he's finding them. He's trying to swim towards them. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm like, what? what? What's the point of scuba diving if you can't swim with the, sh- the animals, creatures under the sea? Oh. Can't fix stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we he just be, became my best friend. We may have him on as a regular guest. Yes. I don't know if I like this guy. Nobody gets me. <laughs> love uh, it. Love it. Okay, Caleb, back you Just to open you. the doors, though. Uh, yeah, Pandora's box just got open. It, it's all right. Throw it at me. <laughs> all right, so continue. All right, back to so a little bit about myself. I'm I'm from Red House, West Virginia, yeah. right down the road. Um, did not grow up turkey or duck hunting. Grew up turkey See? hunting. Turkey hunting. Turkey hunting. Yeah, it's, it's already it's on, on my everybody's mind. mind. It's so mm. close. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. I went to a customer's house today, and they were gobbling on the other hillside, and oh. I was just oh. Got I haven't up. heard any goblin at the house yet, and that's normally that's kind of odd for me. I haven't either. It just gets you pumped up. Oh, it yeah, does. It does. It does. Yeah. But yeah, I'm from Red House, West Virginia, so I'm a local guy. Uh, born and raised here. Nice. Went to Polka. Graduated from Marshall. Got I'm sorry. It. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, we it could have done without that information. Well, it was cheap. <laughs> they are, yeah. Well, cheaper. Not cheap. Nothing about yeah. college was cheap. Right. No. But, but yeah. It really ain't, but... Right, so um, you say you say you do duck hunt, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though you got uh, you know thrown into this the ducks unlimited thing, but so how long have you known about ducks unlimited? Have you always been a member or no? So really? I knew about ducks unlimited uh, about two years ago because Greg Hicks was like I bought decoys out of him off okay. of him. He's like, hey, you need to come to my banquet. I was sitting there thinking, like, I'm a poor kid right out of college. I'm, I can't spend money for raffles. So I, <laughs> so I missed it. And then, then he posted that Facebook post, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to jump into this head first. Nice. Nice. Yeah, them, them banquets, I mean, they, they pull in some money from people. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it all goes to a good cause. It does. And it does. tell us about uh, the causes that you want that money to go towards with your chapter. Yeah, Absolutely. So, ultimately, all the money goes for wetland conservation and waterfowl conservation that's raised at uh, Ducks Unlimited Banquets. And uh, that's where I wanted to go towards. When I got, I started researching immediately when I got into Ducks Unlimited. I started researching. I realized that, you know, wetland conservation is one of the most important conservationists sure. out there. Because if you ain't got water, you don't got food, you don't got shelter. And it impacts 900 different species wow. out there. And so, I wanted to kind of do the biggest impact. Can you list those for us? 
Oh, yeah. all, all 900. Don't miss In don't alphabetical count. order. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I can't even count the 900. <laughs> but he is from Red House. So. He said, yeah. he, he said, they poker and Marshall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're right there with me. I can't read. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not Hughes. Yeah, Hughes. Like, where that even Hodges. Comes? Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, e, that ES is exaggerated too, so. Yes, I know that now, Mr. Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hodges. Anyway. I know, I know. <laughs> so, you getting into this, you, you've got a direction you're wanting to take this chapter. Yes, absolutely. You, you was talking while we were sitting here waiting on Michael to get shit ready. Yeah. <laughs> what the, you wanting to rebrand. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about how you're, y'all's trying to rebrand and yeah. all that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I want to rebrand it towards the focus. Everybody sees Ducks Unlimited. I mean, it is the logo. It is the name, which is great. But the 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 cause of everything is to go after wetland conservation. So that's what I'm branding our chapter towards. Okay. Um, I want people to see when they see Ducks Unlimited, they think about our natural water streams. They start thinking about everything besides ducks. Ultimately, I want them to think about ducks because that's what got me involved. But I want them to think about bass musky you know you name it anything trout. that you yeah trout <laughs> turkeys turkeys need water turkeys right? need water right? deer need water i want them to think about that and i want to think about the conditions that our streams are are currently in i mean i don't know if you guys were looking around on the rivers the other day but i was out cold river road uh during that after that big rain and as much water was flowing down was as much trash that was going down there. sure and i was just thinking like man oh. we got to take care of that yeah I know all too well about the trash that comes down the river. <laughs> yeah. I just finished cleaning off my horse pasture, the fence, and I, I found a plastic uh, fire truck. I found milk jugs. You, you name it, it was on the fence. You know, so it, it, it's a catch-all right there. So I, I'm I'm dealing with that trash, basketballs. You, you know, everything flows down the river, and that seems like people's most favorite time mm-hmm. is when it's flooding. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to throw this out in the river. It's, yeah. It'll take it. Yeah. I, and, you know, that ain't right. That's <laughs> Hell, I remember we used to, <laughs> probably horrible, but what are you going to do? You can't stop the trash from flowing down the river. Talking about basketballs, we get to 22 out and shoot, shoot them while they're going down the river. Yes. <laughs> something to do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Practice. It, yeah, it's, yep. uh, it's gotten a lot better. It, yeah, it, it really has. has. It, you know, it has. Mean, within, within the Ducks Unlimited chapters, one of the things that they do is go around and clean up those wet yeah. areas, mm-hmm. lakes and reservoirs and different things like that. Yeah. When we were part of the Canole River Valley chapter, I think it was still named that then because their logo was like a bridge. Yeah. And, you know, we've done a lot of different clubs with them and the REAP program here in West Virginia. Um, the Chick Fil A up in Southridge, they donated food for all of us to go mm-hmm. out there and awesome. do that. Um, who was it that donated water? I can't remember who donated. Maybe Cabe- somebody. No, 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 it wasn't Cabela's. Cabela's. Somebody in the group, I think, yeah. just bought water. And uh, you know, we went out there, and they would even bring the dumpster out there and set it to wherever you're going to clean this stuff up at, so you can put it all in there. Yeah, there was a separate dumpster for tires. Yeah, and they would take those to all the different places and things like that. So, do you all plan on doing cleanups like that within your group? Absolutely. So okay. that's got to be a chapter thing, and that's what I'm wanting to gear towards is getting that started. Uh, of first and foremost, we're going to get this event rolling up and get our feet going. But um, we will do some cleanups and stuff like that because okay. it's just important. That's our part. You know, we can only take so much. We got to give back, and so I got a group of guys with me who's like, we're ready to get back. Yeah, good. that's awesome. well, that's good. Yeah. And another thing Ducks Unlimited does is duck boxes for wood ducks. Yes. Yep. And this state is known for wood ducks. Yeah, um, it, it really is. I mean, a lot of people don't think that it is. They think that they're just here, you know, by, for a certain period of time. But no. um, they have a good bit of them here. Yeah, they live here year-round. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll, you'll see wood ducks all the way, all the way from the beginning of the year to the end. Yeah. And, and they're just everywhere. we got a good wood duck population in the so state. So have you been a part of the um, – building of those duck houses no i have not yeah i am fresh to this okay. like and this is my first year into it and i decided to join like five months ago so four <laughs> or five months ago so so everything's new but to me that's good i, I mean, mean that's no, good, it is though. good i mean you know that's fresh eyes fresh mm-hmm. fresh blood mm-hmm. somebody that's willing and wanting to make the changes you're you're gonna put your heart and soul into that yeah so that's yeah. that's awesome 
Yep. Well, folks, we'll be right back after a word from one of our sponsors with more with Caleb Hughes. <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> no, you sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah. Do you remember when he said you can't fix stupid? Yeah. <laughs> Hodges. Oh, Lord. This guy. Are you looking for that European or craft beer culture? Breathe Wine and Culture Company, where your wine and craft beer culture thrives. Located in Cross Lanes, West Virginia, and coming soon to downtown Huntington, West Virginia, the Breathe Wine and Culture Company offers over 150 types of craft beer, extensive wine choices, thoughtful gifts, and even grab-and-go food options as well as specialized catering. Shop local, shop small for a unique experience. You can check them out on their Facebook page or give them a call today at 304-823-4577. Breathe Wine and Culture Company, 304-823-4577. Oh, Oh my gosh. gosh. You can tell he ain't been in the freaking studio for a while. That seat's cold. (laughs) It was pretty cold, yeah, I got to admit. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. I thought this was a professional. You know what? <laughs> well, it used See, to be. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's I'm, why we've been looking for a new guy. Yeah, I, I can to, understand now. Here, here's it the used thing. Used to be, and you yeah. know, he used to be when, so good. When he when he leaves <laughs> one area, and then he starts to fade away from another, it just things just start falling apart. Guys, I'm semi pro now. <laughs> I got moved down to yeah, the farm league. I don't think you're even in the farm league. I think you need to go back to the minor. Oh, come the on, super Dan. Minors. Oh, Lord. Uh, Anyhow, hey, let's uh, let's get this going with a salute to Valor. We didn't let's have Let's talk anything. about something that matters. That's right. Not Our That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that. You yeah. talk about the veterans before you talk about me. I yes. like that. That's right. Absolutely. Please. So Please. We, don't, we don't technically have one for this evening. We we were struggling to pull one together, but I'm going to do one, which... National. Uh, yeah, national, national treasure. Everybody knows this, gentlemen. If you don't, you should. If you don't, I don't know what kind of rock you've been living under. So tonight we're going to salute Ronald Lee Emery. He was uh, born in 1944 in Emporia, Kansas. He uh, passed away in 2018, sadly. He was uh, served in the U.S. United States Marines from 1961 to 1972, where he uh, acquired the rank of E6 Staff Sergeant, and later he was uh, became an honorary Gunnery Sergeant E7. He was stationed in uh, India Company 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Marine Wing Support Group 17. He served in the uh, Vietnam War. He was awarded a Matorious uh, Unit Accommodation, Republic of Vietnam, and the Gallantry Cross. He uh, obviously, you know, he he was an actor after his career, so that's why everybody should know him, so... But he did put his service in. He did serve our country. He did fight in the Vietnam War. So we want to thank him for his service, even though he is no longer with us today. It was great to be able to watch this gentleman and his natural elements of acting. He was a phenomenal actor. You know, he he was hysterical in all things he did. So we appreciate his service tonight, and we thank him. Yep. Yeah. Emory, appreciate your service. God bless you, sir, and in honor of you. All right, so back to it. We was talking about, oh yeah, how long has the, how long has it been since the chapter has been in operation? How long? It's, it's been on. I know been you a said minute. it's yeah two two and one, so it kind of yeah. mixed in. We took the Charleston Vandalia chapter and then the Canal River chapter, and we put them in put them in one because having two chapters right next to each other just makes it hard on everybody. Sure. Yeah, and so uh, I was told like twenty seventeen. In that era was the uh, last time we really saw anything. I know a lot of people don't remember Ducks Unlimited, so right. It's been a it's been a hot minute. I know we yeah we was talking about that. Well, the I mean, last banquet we went to was I think it's been, it was it's been a long 15, time. 14, somewhere around there. I mean, we're always involved with Ducks yeah. Unlimited because of Greg. Um, oh, know, Greg has a message for you guys, by the way. What is it? He, well, he, it was actually a message for me. Oh. He told me he's sorry. I had to deal with you two, so whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're sorry too, but not but, me. But, but not but, me. Not, not we're you. really sorry yeah. that you have to deal <laughs> with Dave now. Are too. you gonna Are you gonna let the cat out of the bag and tell Greg what you stole from him? What What did I steal? What he What he asked you not to steal? You. <laughs> 
He said, don't steal one of my guys. <laughs> I was trying to keep that a secret. <laughs> that was reverse psychology. Yeah, he was trying know, to get rid of you. I'm going to yeah. tell you so much. It really was. the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess I'd go with Dave. He could press a button here and there. Yeah. But can he, though? He's messed up well, twice now. Well, I mean. True. Those are color-coded, and I've yeah. seen him yeah. press the wrong one five my times. gosh. <laughs> I'm colorblind. <laughs> He's colorblind. I can't read. <laughs> this one's a boo. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about this event that you got coming up. March 14th, 6 p.m. Sportsman's Night Out. Sportsman's so it's going to be the traditional awesome. dinner setting. We're going to have the banquet. We'll have an auction, silent auction, raffles, games. We're just going to have a good time. We're going to recognize local businesses that, that want to work with us and have everybody have, just have a great time, okay. get to learn what we're about again, and uh, start the foundations of the chapter again. Cool. About Greg, it. I know you're watching. <laughs> Better get with us. Um, <laughs> so how many sponsors do you have so far? And if uh, mention those. Talk about those a little bit. Yeah, we got a, we got a couple so far. We got Truist Bank. We got oh, some nice. connections there. Nice. Uh, we're still working on on a few. Um, I got a, a tree lawn service, Paradise Tree and Lawn. They're going to. They can buy a corporate table and everything. Okay. Um, it's been kind of slow, but there's a lot of banquets going on. Of yeah, course, right. you guys know. I think you oh, guys yeah. have been at every single one of them. So I didn't know about these banquets even really existed until I started getting into this. Stuff. Really? So some, wow. of the, some of the biggest banquets that happen in the country are Ducks Unlimited and NWTF. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, they just had the NWTF state banquet here in Charleston. Mm-hmm. And we was able to go to that, and man, we had an awesome time. That that chapter is growing like hey, you wouldn't believe. Don't that. we nothing? I Over. wasn't. I wasn't. In well, there. I was there with other people, so it is still we. Yeah, I watched your live on that. There was a lot of people there. Yeah, there was there was, a, yeah, there was there over was. 400 and some people there. Is that what they said? Wow. And you're talking about corporate tables. I think they said they had 27 corporate tables. Yeah. That's a lot. It, it is a lot. And and that's been the toughest part for us for the getting a chapter restarted as for the banquet is because yeah. no one kind of really remembers us. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's already been hit up, which sure. uh, yeah. that, that was just poor planning on our part. But we we're young and ready to roll. So it'll get better next yeah. year. Yeah. You know yeah. when to do it. You know when yep. to hit them up. That's exactly right. Yep. Yep. That's We've good. already got a game plan for next year. You hit them up this year for next year. That's right. Yeah. Be like, well, since it's too late, let's go ahead and book you for yeah. next year. Yeah, let's sign you <laughs> up right now. That's right. Yep. All right. So tell us a little bit about youth and the outdoors. What's your all's plans there? Yeah. So um, I know I know Greg personally has, has done a lot with the youth in his area and his chapter, and he's taking them on hunts and stuff like that. I, I kind of want to get and appeal to the masses. Um just for the simple, I got a marketing degree if I didn't mention that. So I kind of think of the big picture, hmm, okay. little picture matters, but the big picture to me is always what I'm trying to focus on. So I want to, you know, when it comes to youth, one, we'll have youth at this event. We got stuff for the youth, but uh, I want to hit them like, you know, there's a lot of youth that never caught a fish before. Abs yeah, absolutely. So I'm a wetland conservationist. Guess what lives in the water? Fish. And it's just as important as the ducks, the yep. fish are. So we might do fishing stuff related. We might, you know, just see what all kind of corporations want to give get involved with that, kind of reflect cities. You know, I, I live in Nitro, so riding out of the lakes right down the road. Mm -hmm. And so might work with them or something. But, uh, yeah, we, we definitely want to focus on the youth as far as getting them involved. I guarantee all of us at this table can say that there's not enough youth in the outdoors. Oh, no, yeah. Not at all. It's declining more and more every year. Yeah. And we have to really double up on what so these we stupid want. things right here, these phones and the tablets and the phones, video tablets, games. You know, yeah. you know, I hate to say it, but kids don't play outside no more. No. They don't. I mean, it, I, even the my sad own thing son, about that, though, my son hunts yeah. and he'll come home from school and he goes straight to his room and starts yeah. playing his game. Yeah. I would come in, change my school clothes, and be right back outside. Be in the woods, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Man, you're smarter than me. I just went in my school clothes. Yeah, I, I, I got my butt. You know how many buddy. times? You know how many times? I don't, I, don't think, I don't think they was allowed to bust butts in your area. <laughs> oh, no, they, they were. Uh, how man, old are you, Caleb? 26, oh, going God. on 27. Yeah, yeah a, you, you had timeouts. Yeah, I have, a, <laughs> <laughs> I have a flat part on my head that's actually callous a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. You know, my dad yeah. just We're whacking you in the back of the head. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, now, now they totally changed. They don't even do timeouts anymore. Now it's time ins. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen this? Time no. Ends. It's called a time in when you actually have to sit with your child. So it's like, it's like 
It's like you're being punished. So they punish. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. No, that, that was a was joke, good. Facebook. That was yeah. good. So they no, punish but, you and the kid at the same time. Yeah, you have to sit there with the child while they're while they're yeah being. Now I know what my dad meant when he said this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> that, that's what yeah, oh, yeah, I know yeah. what that means exactly yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, man. So getting back out of the ducks a little bit, you're an avid outdoorsman. Oh, you don't just duck hunt. No. What, what all? Obviously, we know your my brain's on the turkeys right now because you you'd mentioned yeah. turkey a little bit. What all do you hunt? Oh shoot! Anything that moves. Yeah, let, let's. <laughs> no, so I. I, I, uh, uh, no, uh, no. I, I know Shush. where his mouth's going, but uh, no, I started off as a deer hunter. The man's married. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I am. Promise. Um, I started off as a deer she's hunter. Watching right now. Yeah, yeah. No, she's she's asleep. We got a one year old son, and she's oh, already. Oh, oh, she's definitely I asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah, definitely yeah. asleep. Yeah. Yeah, wow. so the reason I'm here and not in my house is because seven thirty. He's he's pretty wild, not wanting to go to sleep. Oh, uh, okay. He's out. Yeah. yeah. So so you started with deer. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. My earliest memories is deer hunting with my dad. Yeah. Like I was sure. four years old. Everybody said that I was too young to go. And my dad's Never. like, I don't, I don't care. We're going to go. Nice. I remember walking through a creek, getting my feet wet, and <laughs> sitting. We just sat on next to a tree. That was next to a tree, and I was sitting on a rock in the sun, and I my teeth were chattering, and he'd be like, "You cold? No." Nah. I'm good, Dad. <laughs> and he's like, oh, "All right, let, let, let's go." I'm starting to get a little cold, and I, I, he he says that I looked at him and said, "Dad, I'm sure glad that you said that because I'm freezing to death." Yeah. <laughs> we sat in the cabin the rest of the day. <laughs> nice, but it was it was awesome. It was an experience. Yeah. So you yeah. remember that? That's yeah. something you remember. Yeah, that's that's so, what this, the youth need. Yeah, and I often wonder how, how you know different things like this start in your youth in the outdoors. You know, in different parts of the country, is it they start out pheasant hunting or they start out rabbit hunting? You know, it seems like here in West Virginia. It's deer. It's deer hunting. It's deer yeah. hunting. Absolutely. Even, like northeast really all the way up, it yeah. seems like. Unless you probably get up Maine area and stuff like that where you're on the coast. I'd say them guys probably started yeah. out duck hunting. See, well, I started with squirrel and deer about the same time. Yeah. Squirrel, I, I did yeah. squirrel, yeah. Yeah. No, I, same yeah. here. Yeah. And that's what I started my son on was squirrel. Yeah. Deer. See, I, had, I, I got a 410. Uh, single shot, Good. and so I, everything I actually, everything I killed was you know with that four ten slugs that's awesome. or whatever. That's, that's what I started with was four ten. Yeah. Same here. Yeah, yeah. My grandpa actually, uh, my uncle broke the stock on my four ten. It's a JC Higgins bolt action four ten shotgun. And I so got a, I got a JC Higgins twenty. Yeah, and nice. so my my uncle bought it out of Sears and Roebuck catalog. Yeah, said yep. said it was a terrible shot, which is probably him. And, uh, <laughs> took the stock and broke it against an oak tree. My grandpa. And they lived on the west side of Charleston. And uh, so he took it to school, him and his teacher in shop class, built the gun back up together. Oh, wow. Awesome. So did that have a clip that goes on the bottom of it? No. No, that one No, it all goes in. uh, It's a slide tube. Okay. Okay. So mine had a clip. Mine's got a magazine. Mine had a metal magazine that went in the bottom of it. Oh, yeah. Man. It was a bolt action. Yeah. Y'all had more than one shot. (laughs) I think it was four. Well, the funny thing is, you're talking about the broken stock. Mine has a broken. It's got a. Crack down the stock. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I know, I haven't fixed it. I need to fix it. It's a good shooting gun. It was. Oh, it, I, it's got th- the. It's got two barrels too. You I know, it's got never the slug had barrel any problems with and mine. the um, huh. shooting wise. Yeah. Now, now there was one little piece because it had like a little claw thing on it. Oh, where, it'll still shoot. Don't like, get me wrong. The bolt. The bolts made totally different than they are today. Mm-hmm. It actually had a, a claw that went in and pulled yep. your shell out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So that little yeah. there was a there was like a little um, some kind of O ring or some kind of clip that would hold that those two little pieces in, and it would come off every now and then when it got hot. Yeah, and I would lose that little pin piece on the side. So I I had I found it every time I lost it, but there was um, I can't remember what I'd done to get it to stay on there better. But we didn't glue it or anything like that. But duct tape. That's probably what you yeah, do. That's what yeah. I do to the stock. Yeah. As long as you <laughs> hold the stock right, it doesn't affect yeah. it. But if you don't know that the stock's broke and you shoot it, yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be bad. But I know the stock's broke. So I still shoot it though. Yeah, I I do need to fix it. I'd like to get a new stock. So is it. yours a walnut stock? Yeah, that's what mine was. Did you say it was a twenty? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Huh. Yeah. And now now look at us. We've upgraded. I just bought an AR ten lower, and we're gonna build a. 22 250 AR. Yeah, I mean we How things have changed. If you're if you're in the outdoors, you don't stop buying guns. No. You no, you just no. buy more. Yeah. They just get more expensive. 
Yeah. They do. Yeah. For sure. So, so you said you started off with deer. Do you rabbit hunt any? No, I did not grow up rabbit hunting, which was weird because that's what my dad grew up. And I got cousins that, that absolutely have just, that's what they do. I rabbit hunted with my grandpa. Yeah. He had beagles. Yeah. yeah. He, he lived, he actually lived in the city, but it was like on the out, well, it's not really outskirts of the city. I mean, they're, yeah. in, they're in Bluefield, but he lived in the wooded area of the city, I guess is what you mm-hmm. call it. Yeah. And uh, he had like 15 or 16, I don't know how many beagles he had. Mm. And they would come up there and try to get on to him all the time because of Sydney ordinance and all this stuff. And I can't remember what he what he used to tell them, but he, he got to keep them all. Sure. We had a couple dogs, you know, when I was growing up <laughs> hunting them. And one of them, man, oh my gosh, I'd put it, I'd, I'd put her up against anything. <laughs> you know, I mean, she was, she was an amazing, because I, you know, I hunt with all kinds of uh, rabbit dogs for my papa. Yeah. But, uh, man, yeah, so I, had, I, I had a great one. Speaking of dog hunting, coon hunt much when you was coming up or? No, no, no. I didn't do any coon See, hunting. I was, I was wondering, that, that was where yeah. I was kind of going. Now that's fun. Coon yeah. hunting's oh, fun. Yeah. But I didn't do any of it, but I had a lot of family that did. It seems coon hunting's a thing of the past. Like, yeah. I know you said you was 26 mm-hmm. years old, so I was wondering. We, we well, coon hunted every night. I got you, buddies. That's what they do. Okay. So I, just, still, I just never went with them. Okay. If you go up north, Pocahontas County, yeah, Upshur County, stuff like that, you'll you'll still hear coon dogs at night. Yeah, you know you'll hear them running. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know we, but not down in this area like no. you would, you know, back in the day no. when you was out on Rocky Fork fifteen years ago. We had dogs. You could hear it. Yeah. You could hear them running. Everybody I grew up with was was rabbit hunters. If they mm-hmm. were rabbit hunters, still, I mean, that kind of died off. Small so, game has died off. It has one hundred percent. It has so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think it's real interesting how you get involved in one sport like this, one species, and it just evolves into all these different other, you know, things. Because I never duck hunted Mm -hmm. until... Still haven't. Probably, (laughs) what is it? Uh, I'd say... I'm smart. I'd I'd say probably about eight years ago. It's It's been about eight years. Well, I I, I know it's awesome. I, I see it. But I have a horrible problem. If I do something, I'm going all in. Well, same here. I don't want to have to buy a boat. I don't want to have to. I don't want to spend forty thousand dollars to go duck hunting because I know I would. Let's go duck hunting. You nope. spend the forty thousand dollars, and I'll tag along with you. <laughs> <laughs> See, then you're sharing it with everybody. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Sharing yeah. is caring. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Because I know me. Yeah. I have this. I have this problem. I go when I go into something. I go all in. Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, my buddy got decoys for Christmas. Duck decoys and. uh I went out the next, like, two weeks and bought some from Greg off Facebook because I thought it was a good deal. Probably was not a good deal. I no bet, one Greg. I bet. No. Were they Dakotas? No. no. I don't even know what they are. They're so old. Oh, man. So. We're Dakota decoy dealer. Oh, well. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> nice. Well, that's just Got like John Fowler's been trying to get me to go. I'm like, no, I can't do it. I just, love duck hunting. It's black. I know what's going to happen. Mean, I really I'm going to enjoy it so freaking much. I mean, I love it so much. After Especially. I started the year after, we went 18 hours to Maine to kill a sea duck. Yeah. An old squall. See, my problem That'll is... That'll be down the road for me. I got an old squall hanging on my wall. I travel a lot for work, <laughs> and so I'm that, in a lot of flyover states. Missouri, an ungodly amount of freaking ducks. Yeah. yeah. They are an ungodly amount of ducks. I sent you that video that one day. Yep. The, the sky was just... Ducks. Oh yeah, that's, that's the way it. it is out west. Yeah, and they was just flying. There I mean, a little here pool. you have like a small sure. section that's like a flyover. Yep, and they come through at a certain period of time. Yeah, some of them stay longer than others, but most of the time it's just a fly through area. Yeah, yeah. And if that's like I got a good yeah I got a good buddy even in the Carolinas. He killed a uh, um, winter. What's the winter white duck goose? Snow goose? Yeah, the snow goose. That's it. <laughs> God, no. The stuff that comes down in the wintertime. Yeah. yeah. Plus goose. Looks <laughs> like snow. Yeah. White all over. But he, he, him and his brother both got drawn for that because it's a draw. It was a draw tag only, and he said they was busting ice going through the through it. And oh yeah. Well, he said they just see the so shadow. Fun? Yeah, it does not. So so <laughs> it, I, we have crazy. never talked about this on this show before, but hmm. when we were in Maine. It was me, Greg Hicks, John Fowler, yeah, I was working, Kurt Westcott, and 
somebody one another one of his buddies. And we were out on this jetty hunting, and the freaking game warden walks out. And it's Northwoods Law. It was on TV. <laughs> it was the Northwoods Law guy that's on TV. I can't remember his name, but we posted all kinds of pictures about it. So he comes up to me first and checks my gun, you know, make sure I had my plug in and all this stuff. And, uh, I, you know, I was fine. He checked all my stuff, and he was like, all right, you know. And these were the nicest guys you'd ever meet, you know. And he goes on down and checks everybody else out, and he's getting ready to check John Fowler out. And uh, there's some sea ducks coming flying in, and he was like, all right, so I know you guys are, you know, I, got, I know you guys are after these ducks. He was like, you got one coming in here. He hunkers down in the middle of all of them over there, and John Fowler kills a sea duck with the dude sitting there. My guy, that's a good warden right there. Dude, it was freaking awesome. I mean, <laughs> it was bad. I mean, <laughs> it was like one of the best experiences we've ever had. And the dude got up. He checked everybody's license. He was like, you guys have had a great hunt. And he was like, thanks for, you know, you know, being. Yeah, supporting. Yeah, supporting that's awesome. Whatever, yeah. You know, the outdoors. Sure. And I was like, yeah, man. I was like, this is freaking awesome. And then he went on about his way. You know, we actually talked to him about the show, and he that's cool. He briefly said something about it, and I think at that time they were going through uh, changes in their administration, so they had um, gotten off the air for a little bit, and then they were coming back on the air. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the, I, I mean, I was a avid watcher of that show. I mean, oh I, yeah, I, it was I a loved good show. watching that show. Now there's four hundred of them. Yeah, <laughs> there is. Alaskan State Troopers was one of my favorite ones. Yeah. Now, when that when the administration changed there, Yellowstone Law, the guy that got in, he was like, "I don't want the publicity. Nothing. Cut it off. They wasn't allowed yep. in. Nothing. It makes it hard to do their job. It, it, it does. does, like everything else. Yeah, sure. I mean, because you you're doing it, you know, with speculation that somebody's going to say something and all this stuff. I mean, everybody's on video these days. So, decoy of the year is an old squall. Oh, is it really? Yeah, and that will be up for auction. Oh, hmm. you got to let me know about that. I just did. No, I mean, <laughs> like, oh, no, I mean, like, I mean, what else does it, if we're not him. if we're not going to be there? Can you do it online? I don't know. That's a question I'll have to ask. Okay. See, I don't know much. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, guys. Because I know sometimes you can do them online. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't now, do it online that, because then you know you're like. God, you know, now that you've said that, I gotta go. Yeah. See. See, that's what I'm saying. I mean that that's the benefit of being being there, right, in yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. You get to see it. We'll have it out. It, Beautiful. Where's where's the banquet going to be at? <laughs> Valley Park and Hurricane. Valley Park so Conference it's, Center. Mike, so it's going to be outside. Go. No, no. <laughs> I mean, if you want to stand out there, that's fine. But you won't get that old squall decoy. No, I've been there. That that's a nice little conference center. Yeah, it is a nice little conference center. I figured it was a little bit central located for everybody. Uh, it's not downtown Charleston, so there's yep. some parking. That was, yeah. like, the biggest thing. And everybody, it's free. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was like, man, is there going to be parking? I'm like, Valley Park and Eric, and they're just yeah. like, oh, we can park there. Nice. This is awesome. So, so you talking about the two combining, what was their area coverage? Was they the same area, basically? As far as I've known, yes. Really? I mean, they were probably just, you know, crossing over Overlap. all the time, okay. you know. <laughs> but that was that was a long time ago. You're right, yeah. You know, so, I don't, I don't know much about it, but. What was that y'all was talking about? The how there was the Canal Valley chapter and then the yeah the Vandalia uh, the Vandalia chapter yeah they, I mean it's real close together yeah. I know that back when Greg helped out with that chapter and John Fowler helped out um, their banquets was almost a week apart I think yeah you know it was real close yeah. together yeah, and, and they, it's just hard to pull in the same donors mm -hmm. for that same thing yeah yeah I mean like the NWTF banquet from Charleston you got twenty seven donors there. You've got um, what's that big oil company? Um, Which one? Well, you got Trans Canada. Trans yeah. Canada was there. And you got all uh, kinds of big oil. What's the one that starts with the D? Dominion. Dominion. Dominion was there. Um, Chesapeake Energy was there. And then you see had, Chesapeake's uh, more up north, like Parkersburg. Yeah. All that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember. Um, there was there was a ton of other ones. Um, they had that. Uh, Kaufman, I think it was um, Kaufman Auctions and Auctioneers or something at a, like that. At a Webster, the one that did I the think, ginseng and stuff. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, they yeah they're, they're, they've gotten big since really since that show, and great people I've talked to all They were sitting guys. at our table. Yeah. And the guy went up, and he was doing his auctioneer stuff, and I was like, they were like, man, this is one of the best guys in the country. 
And he's, I was like, you know, they didn't have him at first. They had another guy, and then they had him. And I was like, dang, that's like, you know, that's like watching one on TV because he was like really good. So, you have you all guys have an auctioneer in mind? Yeah, yeah, we got an auctioneer. Where is he from? Oh shoot, I think Parkersburg. Uh, I know his name, but I forget it right now. Drawing, drawing a blank. Last name's uh, Teets. T e e t s. However, I probably butchered that, but sorry about that. <laughs> we'll have to get over that one. Well, that's all right. That's all right. I butcher a lot of names. <laughs> yeah. He butchers, we, we yeah. All he butchers yeah. a lot of names. I, I he did butchers it, I did it tonight. Yeah. I mean, I mean he doesn't even Hodges. spell it right. No, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. I guess we got to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Oh, you can't handle the heat? They can't handle it. I like that. We're going to have him on every time. That's what he's we just be said my, a little bit ago. He's going to he be was, my uh, partner in crime here. He was giving you heck, and you didn't like it. So. Well, I you notice like that how when he, when he gives us heck that he likes it? Yeah. It's real funny. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's because y'all ain't quick-witted enough to do it, and this guy's... Uh, no, I, 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 get I hold back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days... I don't know what you're holding back, because you ain't holding the buttons right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Are you, you done again? Yeah, he's putting down. All right, we're like... getting that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna I tell you it. what, that monkey starts flinging stuff. You guys are going to be wishing I was back. We got he, diapers. He won't be slinging poo because he's got he's a quarter monkey. I mean, he just sets right. <laughs> really, it's not even a live monkey. Quarter monkeys are live. Yeah, what's a quarter monkey? Look it up. You never seen? Are you being serious? I thought you. I thought you were talking about like the monkeys, like you put. No, it's them little little monkeys that they like. They uh, dress up in. Look, like, I don't care oh, about hey. this. All right, you're going to replace me <laughs> with a <the> monkey. <laughs> okay, so you, we got to tell you since you don't. know. I don't want to know. So there are these little monkeys that are live monkeys, and they dress them up in clothes and put hats on them. And you come up and you give them a quarter, and they grab their quarter with your little hands, little, <laughs> little monkey hands, <laughs> little monkey hands. Like they'll just like grab your quarter. <laughs> You've never offered me a quarter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't worth it yet. <laughs> well, you know. Gee, I got a penny. I can't, yeah. I can't I got stand. A, I got I can't a dime in my pocket. Right. Slow clap for you. <laughs> I can't stand you guys. Let's do that one. <laughs> Dave, you got a uh, verse? Are we doing one today? We'll do one if you got one. You're here? For a uh, change? Yeah. I mean, you for, left. Hey, look. See, for a change. We can give them change. We can give them a change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give it to me. Give them all your change. Everybody give up all your change. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait till after I read the scripture so it doesn't look like I'm like, you know, selling oh, so selling the okay. selling so, the word. Selling the word. Yeah. So you just tell them you're taking up an offering. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Everybody give your quarters up. Okay. Do we have an altar in here? We can get the two of these guys to uh anyway. <laughs> all right. <laughs> See, I don't lie. I'm a man of my word. Here's your dime. That's not a quarter. He said a dime. I said a dime. Times are tough. Uh, Inflation, it should be a dollar. (laughs) That monkey's going to be expensive, too. All right, here we go. So, uh, um, (laughs) gosh, tonight's verse of the day is Joshua 1-9. Where is that out of? It's... It's different. It's oh, different. No, it's yes, not. it is because I can't get most of the Old Testament on that on that translation. So. Okay. so this is out of the New King James. Passion don't have the Old Testament. Not much. Not much. No. Yeah, okay. it's just got a couple. So here we go. It says, "Have I not commanded you? Be strong, and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go." That's right. That's pretty good stuff. So is that why you mentioned that when I said naked and afraid earlier? (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about, Mike. Listen, we're talking about the word. And (laughs) no, no, no. I was talking about our next guest next week. Yes. She's one of the contestants that was on naked and afraid. You were like, as soon as we mentioned that, he was like, Yeah, and I've got our scripture for this evening. It was like What does that have to do with afraid? Oh, that's hilarious. So you were talking about afraid, and that's what I... I that's what yes, I, that's exactly right. See, I'm trying to help her before you know before we have her on. but uh, <laughs> She's not afraid, though. <laughs> yeah. she, she could be naked. She oh, geez. Um, but, anyway, but anyway, back to the word. Uh, so, 
Oh, you still got more. I thought you was done. No, oh. no, no. Well, I mean, yeah, the scripture's done, but we got to talk about it. So, like, I, I don't know. I think <laughs> we just did. You guys just messed the whole thing. I, I, I'm, I'm good. Caleb, you got anything to say? <laughs> I got all kinds of stuff to say according to my wife. But, I mean, if we're going, if we're going to go scripture related, I mean, we can always look at the Old Testament in Genesis. You know, as being a being part of a wetland conservation act, you know, I think it's Genesis one twenty six that a man has the dominion over the earth and all the creatures on it. So yeah, yeah. so I mean that that's Come our on. step, that's our call right there. That's if, awesome. If, if you're looking for a biblical stance on being a conservationist, that's there. That, it is. There's your stance. That's it. That's awesome. Give it up here, right here, brother. Awesome. That's all. Oh, he gets a high five. <laughs> and I get a dime. <laughs> <laughs> you got something out of it, man. Jeez. I feel like a local preacher now. Give me a dime. <laughs> <laughs> preacher in my church says uh, that uh, the deacons, or, or how's he put it? Uh, <laughs> says the Lord blesses him, but the church keeps him poor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He's got me crying and he ain't even over scripture. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it 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 is awesome though. It's awesome to take care of God's creation, man. Absolutely, oh, sure. I mean, yeah. he he made us stewards over it. Yep. That's what we're supposed to do. Yep, yep, sure did. Yeah, that's like the biggest thing for me. I, I do attend church. I go to Riverside Baptist. If anybody wants to go there, we're more than welcome to have you. There's a lot of hunters in there. I mean, my yeah. best friends attend there as well, and that's that's what we do. We hunt. We hunt, nice. fish, we do everything outdoors. But nice. Even my wedding ring resembles my faith. Like, I have a cross in the middle and a deer head beside that and a fish on the other side. So I hear you, brother. That's awesome. Nice. nice. It's it's rooted into me. That's great, man. Good deal, now, brother. does your wife hunt with you? I took her out twice. <laughs> she didn't, yeah. No. Nah. Didn't catch the fever. So, I, I took her out early bow season so one she, year. She took her purse with you, and she was going to take them shopping is what she was going to do. No. <laughs> no, she went out. We we sat in a, uh, a blind, because I figured, you know, if anything happens, rain, it was like 95 degrees. <laughs> Mosquitoes were on. Oh, like, worst time to take her out. Yeah, I was like, I, I took my shirt off. I was sweating. She was like, this is terrible. I hate this. And then I took her again during muzzleloader season. Yeah. And it was like 18 <laughs> degrees outside. Yeah, not, not, not a good time for two, her. Two extremes. No. Yeah, two extremes. Too hot and too cold. Yeah. I hear you. All right, Caleb. Well, it's been a great time having you on this evening, man. We sure it appreciate it. has been. Hope you had a good time with us here. Yeah. Goofing off, cutting up. <laughs> yeah. Talking about the outdoors. You know, that's one of our platforms is we want to mention God, family, country, and everything outdoors. So we kind of inco- try to incorporate a little bit of everything in every episode. Sometimes we don't, but, you know, we try. Yeah, sure. And uh, we appreciate everybody listening tonight. Be sure to check out uh, Caleb on uh, the Facebook page, Canole River Valley chapter ducks unlimited yep. now that's going to be changing what's it going to be changing to canal river ducks unlimited canal river ducks unlimited yeah. so be looking out for that march bit. 14th at 6 p.m sportsman's night out canal river chapter of the ducks unlimited and that's going to be in Tays valley at where at oh valley park and hurricane valley park and hurricane Tays valley hurricane area i thought so. you already said that sorry no i didn't he did but yeah. Well, I just want to mention, you know, mention it again so everybody knows. But um, next week we've got Heather Smith outdoors. She was a previous contestant on Naked and Afraid, so we'll have her on. She tells us that she has a Nutra 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 Rat Nutra Rat, Nutra rat recipe. So they they're big on eating Nutra Rats. They say they're good. And <laughs> we, don't, yeah. we don't have them around here. They, I'd try it. We don't you have know, them. Yeah. Obviously, They're big you know. down down south, Louisiana, and stuff like that. You know that. I'm going to eat anything at least once. He eats coyote. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> but, yep, yeah, so be sure to tune in next week. We got her coming on. And uh, thanks for everybody listening tonight. Be sure to check us out on Apple, Spot, uh, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Amazon Music, and Spotify. Wow. Yep, be sure to check. And turkey season is right around the corner. We will be talking turkey. We will be talking turkey, so stay tuned. After next week, we're going to be talking some major turkey. Be be sure to check us out at naturesvoicegamecalls.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.
This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Stick Tamer Bow Silencers. Are you a traditional archery hunter or shooter? Stick Tamer was specifically designed for the recurve shooter. Made of a hybrid foam rubber material, Stick Tamer is designed to deaden string slap and limb vibration. Stick Tamer reduces limb and string noise, water resistant, and lasts shot after shot. Made in the USA from a hybrid foam rubber for durability. To purchase Stick Tamer and for more information, visit Three Rivers archery.com and blackwidowbows.com stick tamer bow silencers are available exclusively at three rivers archery.com and blackwidowbows.com 